technical RCC building modeling and designing. So if you are facing any trouble with audio or video, please check the settings. So during the presentation, your mic will be muted. If you have any questions, please raise your hand by clicking on the hand icon and type a question in the dialog box and send it. I'll give a short introduction about MIDAS products. MIDAS IT provides total solutions for engineering areas such as buildings, civil as in bridges, geotechnical and mechanical engineering. Our flagship products in these areas are MIDAS Gen, MIDAS Civil, uh, MIDAS Geotechnical that is GTS, and MIDAS NFX. Almost uh, all types of structures could be modeled without compromising on the analysis capabilities as well using MIDAS products. So then, uh, we can, as we can see, numerous special and unique functions and wizards in MIDAS Gen helps reducing the modeling time tremendously. So be it any kind of complex structures like the Beijing National Stadium, then the National uh, Beijing National Aquatic Center, then uh, we can see the German pavilion over here. So any types of stadiums, power plants, uh, general buildings, airports, machine structures, and plant structures or the underground structures can be modeled and designed in MIDAS Gen. So all said about modeling, now let's have a quick overlook on the analysis capabilities of MIDAS building the specific product MIDAS Gen. From, so from simple static analysis to dynamic analysis, we have non-linear and uh, linear and non-linear analysis, heat of hydration analysis, stage analysis, construction stage analysis is also possible. Then apart from these, there are dedicated uh, analysis modules for P-delta effect moving load analysis. So let us go ahead now and see with the content or rather what, what the objective of this webinar is. So this uh, webinar basically focuses on uh, letting you understand the basic modeling, uh, analysis and design capabilities of MIDAS Gen. I'll be showing a live demonstration after that and also an introduction to MIDAS Design Plus and that demonstration will also be shown to you. And after this, we'll have a small question answer session. So these are the contents of today's webinar. I'll be showing, uh, we'll be first discussing about the modeling, the boundary conditions, loading and analysis. Then we'll be seeing the design capabilities that is beam, columns, labs, and the foundation, isolated foundations in Design Plus. So let me start with the modeling and the boundary conditions together. So basically we can, uh, like there are actually numerous ways in which we can do modeling. So firstly there is uh, this simple basic one that is using nodes and elements. So we'll be seeing that in the demonstration. Then there are numerous uh, wizards like the beams, columns, arches, frames, truss, plate and shell. Nextly, we can also uh, do the modeling by importing from CAD, any CAD software, 2D or 3D. So as we can see over here, the line is taken as beam in MIDAS Gen, from the DXF file to MIDAS Gen. Then open polyline or multiple beams, three noded, four noded plane, uh, polylines are plates and closed polylines are multiple beams. And there are many more uh, rules when you're converting from a DXF file to a MIDAS Gen, or rather when you're importing. Then we can also import from Revit structures, Tecla structures. Also, we can convert ETABS files and STAT files into MIDAS Gen. So let us go ahead for the loading analysis. MIDAS Gen enables to uh, specify uh, the self weights, then the nodal loads. These basic static loads are also available, and the dynamic ones are also available in which uh, the hydrostatic pressure, the temperature loads, 
the pressure loads uh, and the dynamic ones you can see the response spectrum analysis dynamic nodal loads you can apply pushover loads time history loads so all these are available in Miraz gen and regarding the boundary conditions uh, in case of piles horizontal simulation takes place unlike other softwares so uh, we can show how uh, columns and how spring uh, supports can be added then pile spring support considers the soil stiffness and uh, non-linear characteristics of springs over the pile height are automatically calculated by the software okay so uh, in designing we'll be seeing beam columns lab also wall design can be uh, done in Mirage Gen and isolated footings will be done in the design plus software solution so uh, let us start with the demonstration in which this is going to be our RC building model so let us go to the Midas Gen software solution this is the start page of the software so let us start with a new file so after registration using this icon you, have, you can go and click on the new file and see whether the registration has been successfully done so as you can see in this user interface uh, we have got two tree menus not just one we can of course have only one if you require more space then we have got a message window at the bottom of the screen and at the end we have uh, this line in which we have got units which we can change at any point of time post and pre-analysis uh, pre -analysis and post analysis also then there are some selection options by direction so we'll be seeing and using all these uh, options one by one during the demonstration so let us start with the structure these tabs are according to the uh, direction like the way we have to construct the building so let's start with the structure type so the structure type we are doing 3d analysis then the mass control parameter will be lumped mass uh, we'll use uh, the static seismic loads in which the uh, sulfate is converted into masses uh, for panel zone effect that is if you want to consider the rigidity of the connection between beams and columns then that panel zone effect can also be taken into consideration using this option okay, so let us now start with some properties first we'll define material properties so we have a huge database of steel and concrete according to ISRC so different grades are available over here and in the same file we can have more than one grade of concrete assigned to different elements so let's take M30, M35, M40 as grades now we can also here go for the section properties we'll create some sections add so again a huge database for steel sections or any type of section so we can have solid rectangular section for now let's create podium columns as the structure is having a podium and a 13 storied building and roof so podium columns user defined let's have these columns as 0.45 meter by 0.45 apply so at any point of time like I said if you want to give the section sizes into meters uh, sorry into mm so you can change it into mm section properties add rectangular section let's say I want main building columns here this will be user defined now this is an mm we need to understand and see every time what is the unit and then input the values so let's take it as say 800 by 230 oh, sorry 300 mm thickness say apply and I'll create some beams the beam size let's say is 700 by 230 mm ok 
Okay, so we have created three sections. Uh, also, if you have some predefined sections, you can import it from other files. Now let us define some thickness for the walls. We'll create some walls also. So then over here you see there is in plane and out of plane option and in plane different uh, thickness, out of plane different thickness options are available over here. So uh, let us take first the in plane and out of plane, the same section thickness, 230 mm. Okay. So I'm just converting back into meters so that confusion won't happen in providing the distances. So let us start with our um, modeling. So we'll start with the node element option. We'll first, first create a node. So as we can see over here, the coordinates x, y, z. So before starting, let me uh, tell you that the x, y plane is the horizontal plane in Metas Chen and z is the vertical distance. So let us apply. As we can see over here, one node has been generated. These are all selection options. This can select all types of elements. So we'll be seeing one by one what all these selection options uh, do and what and how they are useful. Okay, so now we created one node. Let us use the extrude option and create the beams. So we have got this extrude option in which nodes can be converted into line elements, line can be converted to planner and planner can be converted into solid elements. So using M30 material, then checking the section that is beams. Now I want to create uh, at 4 meter distance some 14 number of beams and I say apply. There are some display options which you can change. Now this has been, uh, this we can see in red color. We can go in the display option and have a random color by section. In this way I can change the color, even the font size of the display. Okay, now again let us uh, select all. This is a select all option. I'm selecting all the nodes. Now I want to make certain beams in the y direction. So we'll take the unequal distance in the y direction and now let me tell you how this unequal distances can be applied. So let's say I want two beams at four meters apart. Then I want a six meter beam, a four meter beam. Then again a six meter and again two at four meters apart and I say apply. So as you can see over here, the, uh, what, the beams in the y direction have been created. Now let's go in the top view, select these and using the translate command, I will copy these beams in the y direction. Uh, we'll do it in the unequal y direction, same as that we had done for the extrude. 6, 4, 6, 2 at 4 meters apart. I'll intersect, save side, the nodes and elements and copy the node and element attributes and apply. So we can see over here a podium plan has been created. Now let us extrude the columns. So now I'm here using the extrude option. I use a select single. Now select single is using uh, the cursor by dragging, then there is select by window where one click as in the window is created by using two clicks. So I'll just select the nodes. Over here uh, the elements are also selected but only the nodes will be taken into consideration as we are extruding only the node elements into the line elements. So uh, let's take change the material to let's say M35, podium columns. 
this will be in the z direction vertically downwards so minus 3 and apply so in this 3d we can see over here our columns have been generated now let this extrude uh, the line elements as wall elements now over here we have option of plate and wall plates can be used for slabs and for designing a wall a shear wall we need to create a wall type element so this wall type element by default is taken as membrane you can convert it into plate for taking the bending moments out of plane so let's see we are going to select the beams let's take these beams these will be converted into walls uh, this I will not select because we are going to further divide it and create more walls this will be again in the minus 3 section thickness is given only one but we can select if we have given multiple numbers I mean section sizes so now we can see over here our walls have been created yeah so I was saying that we need to uh, do some dividing of beams and then create by extruding those beams into columns uh, sorry into walls so let me just divide this into equal distance 2 so two equal distance have been created now I want to divide these two beams into unequal distances in x direction this is local x so I wanted 2 meters okay and I'll also create a beam in between them these are the lift wells that I'm creating over here so using this ortho option I can also create a beam that is perpendicular to this beam created over here okay so now let me just select these beams and using the extrude option from line element to planar element it is keep it M30 and minus 3 direction this will be a wall element and apply so now we are done with the wall elements we'll create some building columns as well so let us select the nodes which are to be converted into beam building columns let's go to extrude as we are already there now selecting M40 building columns minus 3 and apply so you can see over here our columns are completely generated so our plan has been our floor has been completely generated let us go to the structures and translate this or rather copy this ahead this will be ones at 3 meters I say add then these uh, material increment column in, section increment these all increments are according to the section sizes and the thicknesses and the material properties that you have given during the property definitions so if you like click on one then which, whichever is the next property that will be taken into consideration for the next uh, floor that is created so again I'm using over here the select all option okay and I say apply so our second story has been uh, has been generated now let us create the main building so I'm now selecting only the middle portion which is going to be generated upwards into a 13 story building now using these activate options over here I'll say activate only so let us deactivate the lower story so using this deactivate option or inactivate option I've inactivated it now let us select all and increase the number of copies distance going to be 3 in vertical direction and I say add over here 
we do not want this and I say apply so now we can see over here if we say activate all option our entire building has been generated okay so this was about using our normal basic functions of creating the node and line uh, node and elements let us go ahead with creating the boundary that is we have to define the supports we'll go in the front view or you can use the option select by plane in which XY plane that is the horizontal plane so whatever nodes elements come into that plane will be selected so as you can see over here those nodes have been selected lying in that particular plane of that particular node or position that I have given okay so this is over here about the definition of supports so this is directional all as in all will be fixed directionally and rotational all that is moments will be fixed we have got seven DOF over here degrees of freedom over here the last one is the warping effect so now supports have been defined uh, also let me tell you about uh, the beam and release option that we have over here in case you want to define I mean there are no uh, second and tertiary beams created over here but when there are and you want to define the path of the force transfer then you can create the beam and releases we have panel zone effect over here in which the consideration of the rigid uh, the highly rigid area of the beam and column connection is taken into consideration and the moments are shown likewise then the diaphragm disconnect option is there so let me first go back to the structure go to the story and say auto generate let's create the stories okay so when we create the stories the flow diaphragm is automatically considered so now that uh, uh, this is done we'll also make the auto wall ID generation with all the walls I'm applying it for all the walls yeah so let us go back to the boundary now the diaphragm disconnect uh, option is available where the openings are there and you do not want to consider that part of rigidity in the display option you can go to boundaries and see the story diaphragm so as you can see over here the story diaphragms are visualized so let us go ahead now with the loading we'll do the static and dynamic loading in this basic tutorial or technical webinar session so static loads first we will create the static load cases in which let us consider the self weight as dead load add let us con consider superimpose dead load some live load function the type will be live load we'll create one uh, earthquake force earthquake and we'll create wind load on structure this can be done in the X and Y direction negative positive we'll see that further so the first thing we need to do is uh, give the self weight command in the self weight command over here we see that there is option of X Y Z so uh, we have to give the uh, software command if the uh, gra where the gravity is actually pulling uh, towards the X Y or Z direction in our case we have Z direction that to in the negative direction so these are absolute values where we have to provide it minus one so let's say add now uh, this is not assigned as such to elements it is uh, it is already automatically assigned to all the elements that are modeled in the file Okay, so let us go ahead with the wall loads okay let us consider the wall loads uh, as self weight only because these are going to be there okay I'm going to now use this work stream menu 
to select all my beams I just double clicked on it okay I'm adding let's say minus 10.6 full wall height I say add so now my wall load has been done in the UDL format also there are various other options in the load types like we can put concentrated force, concentrated moment, trapezoidal load, and likewise. Now let us go ahead and create the floor loads. Now for creating floor loads we need to first create the type. Okay, So let's go for the defined floor load type. So may, let's make it a podium level or podium floor in which my sulfate is going to be high I'm using higher thickness let's say minus 3.75 my superimposed dead load will be minus 1.5 say and let's say I have got some vehicles there so let's put it as minus 5 and I say add Next for a typical story or typical slabs my sulfate goes down to somewhat 2.75 depending upon the normal thickness of the slab you want to take this idea let's keep it as minus 1.5 and LL that is a live load let's take it as minus 2 so over here we need to be careful about putting the sign conventions that is in the negative direction. The software is FEM based so we need to consider and uh, understand what input we are giving to it. Now let us create one more, let's say a roof level and I'll increase the live load as 3 and SIDL as 3 again with some waterproofing okay so now we are going to be applying these loads uh, there is this activate option by identity that is by story we can do it now we have defined the stories let us create activate only the floor okay now using just this one plan I'm going to be creating the floor loads for entire building so let us see how so at the podium level these are the distribution ways where we can do one way, two way, polygonal centroid when there is there are more than uh, four beams then polygonal length where more number of beams are available in the uh, convex direction also so we'll see that in some advanced tutorials also we'll right now take only the two way distribution and I will show how easy it is to apply now there are two uh, floors of podium so we'll copy it in the Z direction with the distance of 3 meters okay so now just click on this green tab and now I start just using four nodes and whatever beams are coming in between the load will be distributed accordingly Okay, so we are done with the podium level now let us do for the typical level now this typical level this is 13 numbers at 3 meters height so let me select so my walls are there I do not need to create any dummy beams for the walls for sorry for the uh, floor loads to be created the walls will take the distributed load so I'll just activate all and we can see over here that all the stories have got the generated generation 
Now let us select the last floor roof level, activate and I will create the roof level floor. We will not copy it, there is no further story of power. The software gives us errors and warnings while giving the commands itself. So later on during analysis issues don't happen. Okay, so now our floor loads are done. Let us go ahead with the lateral loads that is uh, the wind loads. Now let I'm assuming this uh, structure to be there at Pune. So I'm considering IS 875 standard method. I'm considering the basic wind speed as 47 meter per second, terrain category as 3, building class as C and I'm going to apply it only in the X direction so my Y will be 0. Apply. So now I'll show you the wind load profile before analysis itself we will get all the story forces, story shears, overturning moment graphs and the entire calculations over here itself. This calculation sheet we can readily get over here before analysis and understand what calculations the software has done, what forces, what shear forces have been taken into consideration, how they are calculated. So for every story with the x, y and z direction and all any parameters, all the parameters that have been taken according to the IS code. This can be saved. Similarly, we see in the seismic loads add earthquake using IS1893. So let us take this as seismic zone 3, medium soil, importance factor 1, damping percentage 5. Now the fundamental period we can manually input over here using calculations, manual calculations or there is a period calculator available in Midas Gen. So these are all formulae that have been provided as per the IS code. So let's take the infill walls and apply. So it has calculated the x and y direction by fundamental periods. Now let us give it a direction, I'm putting it in the x direction only, so y direction 0. We can apply the accidental eccentricity, so that is what uh, w, uh, sorry, uh, eqx positive, eqx negative, so that is dependent on the accidental eccentricity, the vertical moments that are applied. So I'm not applying any vertical moments as such for now. Apply. Again, just like we have seen in the wind load, there is a seismic load calculation sheet. So before the analysis itself, we can see the shear, story shear, base shear, 2562. So let us just note down this number because we are going to be doing the response spectrum analysis over here. So for the scale factor, we need to remember this number. So now we are done with the lateral st uh, static loads. We'll go ahead with the dynamic loads. So response function, uh, response spectrum data, that is what we're going to define now. Function, add. So we have data for design spectrum using again the IS1893, selecting the seismic zone, soil type, damping ratios, importance factors, response factors, and the maximum period will be 6. So we can see this graph with normalized acceleration, velocity, likewise. So our RS function is done. We'll create the load cases now. Let's make it in the x direction. Spec x. So uh, excitation angle, I'm keeping it 0, that will be in x direction. For spec y, we'll be keeping it as 90 degrees. 
now if we do, if the structure is not exactly rectangular we do not know which is the major uh, axis where the maximum loads will be applied that time the auto search angle will be seen so x is the major uh, angle over here we'll see i'll just show in the later results let's add it we have to do eigen value analysis to understand the natural period of the structure so there are two types eigen vectors and ritz vectors so for complex structures ritz vectors are used let us use uh, for a simple structure eigen vectors itself using either the subspace iteration or the line source method here i'll be using line source method let's uh, have the number of frequencies let's say 20 okay now i'm just putting a spec common one where i wanted to auto search the angle the major angle no scale factors are required to be provided at the beginning add so now we are done with the response spectrum data we require to do one load to masses command so my dead loads going to be 100% and my live load will be 0.25 as my live load is for a basic structure not important one or rather according to the code it says that if the live load is taken 3 or more than that sorry 5 or more than that then uh, your loads to masses conversion of uh, of live load is supposed to be 50% so now the loads to masses is done we'll go ahead with the analysis so within short period of time our analysis has been completed this is the analysis message and the command message also let me tell you about the modeling part that uh, you can give commands like you give in autocad in midas gen as well for creating any modeling part now after analysis let us go ahead and see the results so after analysis in the results tab will first create the load combinations these load combinations can be automatically generated by the software so we'll go to the concrete design as we'll be seeing the design part also today we'll add concrete as 456 now we need to put the scale up factors spec x and spec or uh, the simple spec automatically generated so for that we need to understand the scale factor so where to see the scale factor So in the results table, as we see over here, let's go to the story and see the story shared by response spectrum analysis. We'll see for the spec x and the simple spec. So we can see the base shear over here in the x direction is three three five four point five. and it is the same as that in the spec so uh, spec x okay so now likewise we have to apply the scale factor so let's say it comes to somewhat one point five seven some what this is pre calculated value i guess we need to calculate it again so let us consider it 
and we can see over here the strength and serviceability load combinations have been created with the scale factors that have been applied okay so let us first see with the reactions of the columns so let us take a load combination of dead load plus live load I will activate bash this we'll see the values apply on the in the F set direction okay so now we can see over here a red arrow is marked over here this means that the maximum load or a maximum reaction is coming at this particular node and the values also can be visualized over here next we will see the deformation or the displacement contour of the entire building so we will see the same we will deform it let us not apply the values okay so this is how we can see the deformation and the legend also over here let us go ahead and see the SFD BMD diagrams so let's see in the forces beam diagrams command over here let us undeform it legend is seen so now we can just activate only a few columns and beams for seeing a proper view you can have a solid fill see the values so we can see the maximum values or we can see all the values at the same time plus there is a quick view option so let me just activate all okay so I'm taking any beam over here so this is a quick view option in which any beam can be clicked on or any element can be clicked on select any of your load case any of the component that you require to see and at any location also we have got this beam detail analysis option in which any beam can be selected and you can see the displacement diagram SFD and the BMD So this is about the force uh, beam diagrams we can also see the wall diagrams so whatever the walls we have created so their moment diagrams have also is also seen over here we can just select only the walls and activate so this is done we'll go ahead and see the mode shapes vibration mode shape I'll activate all this is the initial view so we can see the multiple mode shapes how the structure is deforming and behavior of the structure so now to see ahead the vibration mode shape tables are there so the eigenvalues if you want to check just select all of them we need to see the modal mass participation so here we can see them so we need to know that uh, at the 11th mode itself the mass participation is 90 more than 90 percent so these are the results in uh, the whatever uh, results we get in the table format these can be dynamic reported or we can take it to the excel sheets as well there are like most of the options over here they work for uh, only seeing the spring reactions or without spring reactions like that 
so it is it can be changed manually so let us go ahead now with the design part so design we have got options of steel design RC SRC cold foam design but in IS code we have got just steel and RC design so we have selected right now IS 456 RC design in the general parameters I'll show first the definition of frame it is going to be braced secondly important is the member assignment so the secondary and tertiary beams if there are so you can use the automatic and say all option and it will automatically understand the uh, load transfer that we have provided use release option and accordingly the design will be done now let us start with the design code for the RC design we have selected IS456 we can apply the IS13920 1993 then the factors, safety factors of the soil change we can change the modulus of separate reaction distribution factors for beams this also can be changed over here itself so if you want 30 percent of uh, the moment radius distribution then my point set Then modify concrete material now we need to provide it with the steel uh, grade the reinforcement grade so I'm just going to use the IS grade of 500 FE 500 and we can see over here the compressor strength all these things they can be changed and manual FCK can be provided by just saying none and say modify similarly these options are important next part is about the design criteria for rebar where we'll be giving the software the options for using the number of rebars so according to the IS code these are the accordingly 50% or 100% then for column design again selection of the bars the links and the cover for the column let's say 40 mm then there are no braces let's go ahead for the shear wall design rebar let's say only 12 mm diameter horizontal as 10 mm then the cover let's take as 0.25 mm only then there is input additional wall data in which we can also design as out of plane bending and we can check with the spacings of the vertical bars so we do not want it to be spaced so much and we need to add certain we can manually input also and there are different methods you can see it in the help menu okay. so now we are done with the design criteria for rebar moment redistribution factor we already provided now let us start with our beam design so now all these beams uh, instead of that because of time constraint I'll just select 
a story and beam design. Okay, so now our beams have been designed. So we can see it according to the properties that we have given to the beams and the members also individually. So I'll just activate this story for us to have a better visualization. We'll connect this to the model view. So we're talking about this beam over here. We'll see the graphics by clicking over here. This shows us how the reinforcement has been placed, how much reinforcement has been provided. This is a short summary. Then we'll see the detail how the beam design has been done, which load cases has been taken, what formula has been used. shear capacity so everything detailed report you can get also we can get a small summary in the table format over here this table can be copied using this copy table and paste it wherever you wish to so let me explain this we can see over here the position IMJ uh, start middle end the negative moment that has come uh, the load combination that has been taken the maximum load then uh, this is the top steel area area of top steel the rebar arrangement that is two bars of 16 mm diameter then the positive moment the load combination for that and accordingly the bottom area reinforcement the rebar positioning four at uh, four numbers of 16 mm diameter then this is the shear force the load combination for them the area of this shear force and the stirrups that have been taken at different positions. We can again, uh, you know, see it by saying which are the okay, as in which are the past ones, which are which are the not good, as in the failed ones. Over here, none of them failed, so we'll see ahead if it happens in the columns. I'll just say all. Select few columns over here and let's say column design so again similarly I'll select the podium columns also So now you can see over here by property the podium columns and the building columns. So in the property itself we see whichever has failed but none of the columns over here has failed. In the member again let us activate this and connect the model view. So this column we are talking about. Let's see the graphic. In the graphics we'll see the arrangement of the bar that has been done. This rebar pattern, it says that there are six numbers of bars, two numbers of rows, and P20, there is 20 mm diameter. You can see over here the PM interaction diagram as well, the shear force capacity. Again, a small summary of the column design. We can get the details of the column design just like we had for the beams. So now if you have any column already designed, you can check that or you need to provide some other uh, arrangement. So let's select that and say update rebar. So when you say update rebar, over here a column has been generated so you right click on this and say properties and detail figure so over here you can change the number of rebars 
change this say add replace close and this can be checked using the concrete code check column checking so this does pass we can see the graphic over here we had changed the number of n number and diameter so this is how column design column check beam design beam check can be done so I'll just activate all and show you lastly the wall design so we need to be careful while creating the walls it should not be a plate element so we need to select the plate or uh, the wall element while creating it so now over here we can see the walls all walls have not been uh, has, have not been passed they all most of them have failed so we can just see click them and say graphic and over here we can have a graphical presentation of how the design has been done and we can see why it has failed in the actual and the moment we can see the PM interaction diagram it has even failed in the shear force capacity so even the drop PM curve if we click 3D PM diagram can be seen over here with all the detailed result we can even print these results so in this way we have seen beam column and wall design in Meraz Gen now the, lastly we need to see the foundation isolated footing design so for that we have to go for the next uh, software solution that is Midas Design Plus you go in the tools and click on Design Plus okay so now we'll say new file So actually Meta's Design Plus is under development. Right now only footings are available. But uh, as, per I, uh, as per American codes and Euro codes, and in future the Indian codes also will, in, will be included in this. Slabs, beams, columns, shear walls, footings. Footings also isolated, combined strip footing. Then buttress, stairs, corbels, beam table, slab table patch wall even some steel designs can be pro can be done in Midas design plus so let us select the Indian standards basically this IS 456 2000 for RCC say apply let us change the rebar code this is I've just double clicked on it IS so all these footings will select then there are certain spacings we do not want so we'll remove that apply and preferences for designing I want to change the maximum thickness I wanted to design so for that maximum thickness let's take it as 1000 mm 1 meter so let us start with isolated footing I have to connect this Midas design plus with the Midas gen file we get a confirmation over here that successfully linked with Midas gen so now I want to import the reactions from there to Midas Design Plus and then design it. So let us go to Midas Gen. Let us select certain, let's say I want to design the podium isolated footings. I selected using select single option these nodes. So we can see over here these nodes are reflected. Okay, so I say import. So we can see the node number 121 
is having the highest reaction values or the load values so according the design load and the load combination is taken over here we need to consider what concrete material we are using for the footing the main rebar any surface loading if you want to apply to it changing the soil bearing capacity let's say 250 and I just click on design so you can see over here 700 mm thickness is required and 2300 by 2100 is the rectangular footing that they have provided and how the results are and this is what the result will see also if you want to change anything let's say I want it to have only 500 mm thickness and check so it is failing in the one way and uh, one way shear in the x and y direction in a two way shear it is passing so we can see this in the various forms like say report and also in the excel format this will come in the word format so in this way we can also uh, get drawings of Miras this uh, the Mirage Design Plus is under development. That's where some errors are coming up. So uh, in Mirage Gen uh, and using Mirage Design Plus right now, the latest version of Design Plus is coming up, in which all these problems will be overcome. Uh, so this was uh, regarding the RCC design of a building model. So if you have any questions. You can write to us at tech support at mirasit.com. Yeah, so there are a few questions. Um, So we'll be answering that with uh, by your email addresses that you have provided to us. Okay, thank you for attending Midas uh, webinar on Midas Gen. We'll be looking forward for your queries. Have a great day.